things are bad, you're always on your knees and you're always looking for God. Uh, so you don't really find it. But when things are going well, we have a tendency to stray away from God. Right. See, as long as David was in battle, he didn't have time to deal with issues that kept popping up. Yeah. But now that he is away from battle and everybody is gone, he has time to deal with his mind. And when a man has time to deal with his mind, Danger can occur. Well. He sees the woman, and because he's the king, he has to have her. Mm. Now, it wasn't enough that he'd already began to have multiple wives. Mm. He was already fulfilling his sexual desires. Mm. But there was one who he did not have that he saw and wanted to have her. Mm. Now, it's curious because normally when the Bible mentions somebody, it doesn't tell them, uh, it, it tells who they belong to, but it does not indicate that this is a wife. So here, in a sense, God is warning with the servant to say, yes, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam. That's natural. This part is unnatural. The wife of Uriah the Hittite. The servant was putting in a warning. But David, being the king, knew he had the power to do what he wanted to do. So David sent messages to get her. She came to him and he lay with her. <sighs> Why would a man of God, who is a man after God's own heart, stray away or do something against God? What makes us do the things that we do even though we realize we are wrong? Psalm 103.14 says, For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. A lot of times you forget who you are. And because you forget who you are, it allows us to fall into some dangerous situations. The internet, pornography, adultery, fornication, things that we know are against God, but yet, we continue to travel down these dangerous roads. And it's quite simply because it's all just a click away. Every danger, every pitfall, every trial, every tribulation is just a click away. The bad part about it is that men, we have this thing to think that we are super intelligent, Come on now. super spies, super secret agents. Nobody knows what we're doing. Nobody will see what we're doing. And we begin to engage in activity that is not only bad for us, but will remove us from God's presence. But God knew, and he knows that we are a mess. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. So the first thing I want you to understand is you are not alone. See, the problem with living in secrets is that you feel like you're the only ones failing in these areas. Right. You're the only one struggling with pornography. You're the only one struggling with adultery. You're the only one struggling with fornication. You don't, and, and, and I can't understand for the life of me, God, you know I'm not supposed to do these things, yet you keep giving me these feelings. You gave me uh, 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 the, the, the ability to seek after pleasure, wow. right? So why is it wrong when I do it? 
Hmm. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. All right. so let's see how this plays out. Here David, is on his balcony, sees a woman who he has to have. Not that he has enough. See, the problem, what you got to understand with sexual sin is that it's never satisfied. You think that multiple wives will keep a man in check. The problem is that the need for the sexual desire becomes more because you get, things get stale as you see them because you already tasted more wine than you should have tasted. And so now you want the wine to keep flowing not that I have, see, the, the deal is what all the women that he had was what? He'd already had them. Right. I've already tasted that wine. Yeah. But that on the balcony now is some new wine. Yeah. Even though I know that it's not good for me, yeah. the problem is that my eyes connected to my brain releases a chemical reaction in my body. I, I used to often wonder when, when, when I was young and, and 18 and I was coming up and, and I started talking to a young lady and things in my body began to change. I, 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 Lord, what, what's happening inside of me now that I'm looking at a young lady and I'm no longer looking at a person, I'm looking at an object. And, 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 and my physical being begins to respond so that things begin to happen down below that I hope she ain't seeing. Yeah. And as a young person with nobody there to define or to describe it to you, you want to know what's the issue. Yeah. Because there's something inside of you now that has waken up that you ain't never seen before. And all of a sudden, one mind turns to two minds. But one mind don't think. And the other mind that's supposed to think has been flooded with chemicals that don't allow it to think. 